So we've discussed uh, the TCP IP model a little bit and men made mention of the OSI model. Uh, so we're now going to talk in more detail about these two models and, and what they mean. So the TCP IP model is created by the Internet Engineering Task Force. We've already discussed about them and shown them. Uh, and this is a protocol model. It defines exactly what happens when communications occur between two devices, how that application data gets broken down and transmitted across and then in turn uh, received and then rebuilt and sent to whatever application it needs to be uh, sent to. The OSI model is a reference model. Uh, and it was created by the International Organization for Standardization uh, from Europe, so that's where the OSI comes from, it's the reverse. And it's used to define what occurs during uh, network communications but can be applied to any protocol model uh, and is often the preferred method of uh, describing what's going on in a network and people often use the OSI layers more than they do the TCP IP model layers uh, so when you're troubleshooting and discussing things with people use the OSI model as what you're referring to so the TCP IP model we have four layers. OSI, we have seven. And I'm actually going to write down these seven layers. You count down. So we have seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, the TCP IP model really isn't numbered necessarily in common usage. So we won't number those. And you'll see here that they actually line up. We have the transport layer, network and internet layer line up, the data link and the network access layer line up, and then often there's people um, also refer to below the network access layer as the hardware, the hardware uh, layer for TCP IP and that lines up with your physical layer. Uh, but up here we have a blank spot. So we have application and that's it. So the application layer in TCP IP contains the three upper layers of the OSI model uh, by design which is m pretty much the common way of how things are created anyway uh, the application presentation and session layers are often built into the application itself anyway so this is actually a pretty accurate representation of the reality of life but the OSI model breaks it down to, into a more granular method and we'll go through these seven layers in more detail uh, throughout the next many videos <laughs> Uh, describing what happens at each layer and how they interop with each other. Uh, the layers are designed to they, they define how something happens but they don't affect the other layers if that makes sense. So uh, the applications are designed so that if you're using the TCP IP model uh, or if you're you know using the OSI model as your reference the applications don't care what transport layer it uses or it doesn't care what uh, hardware it's transmitted across or it doesn't care what network layer model it's using, what layer 3 model it, it doesn't care if it's using IP or something else. They're, the reason for the layers of the model is so that things can be switched up and, and upgraded and changed within the layers above or below the layer that you're currently in so that it's uh, future-proofed essentially and it's separated so you can swap out a protocol here and there in different layers and everything will still interop correctly that's the idea of the layers it also helps with troubleshooting because when you're troubleshooting something especially when we get into CCNA we're gonna spend a lot of time on two and three and, and even some one Th this is the, the first three layers are really your, your bread and butter for the CCNA type uh, type work that we do and, and studying that we do uh, and you'll you'll see once you start learning learning about it, you know when you're troubleshooting, you're you're going to get an idea as to, all right, this is probably a layer one or a layer two or a layer three issue, because you understand those separations between the layers and how they um, how they differ, uh, and you'll, you'll you'll get a hand of that. So the application layer is your application, um, and over here in the OSI model, the application presentation is session. They're all, they all kind of act as one. Uh, but the application layer is your, your web browser, your video game, your FTP program, whatever it is that you're using, 
uh, and that's going to generate your data. That's then going to send it to the transport layer and when you try to transmit something it's going to send it to the transport layer to say I need to break this data up into pieces and then we're going to send that down further uh, and also the transport layer is also going to say um, you know let's we're going to communicate over this certain port number so we and it's going to assign a port number to the application at each side so that when we send that data it understands what application to send it to so if, if you think about it if you have five applications open on your computer when you receive data well how does the computer know what application that goes to how do you how does it know that when you're browsing in Firefox that it doesn't send that web page to Chrome how does it know to do that that's where the transport layer comes in the, you have the internet slash network layer uh, when it goes from the transport layer and gets sent down it then gets additional information attached to it uh, the piece that piece of data gets additional information attached to it we call encapsulation and it's going to gain information about addressing logical addressing uh, so we when you talk about IP addresses that's we're going to get into later on that's where layer 3 comes in that internet on the TCP IP model slash network on the OSI layer model how that comes into play that's your logical addressing like um, the address of a house well it's like a phone number <laughs> it's it can change you know it can move around physical locations uh, but it still defines a location in some fashion logically defines it uh, you have your network access layer which receives the piece of data next uh, and then that defines your physical addressing that's why I changed my last answer because <laughs> Uh, the, the network access slash data link layer on layer two that really defines your physical address so that's like your house number that's this is the physical address of this network interface and when it sends needs to send a piece of data across the physical slash hardware layer what address on the physical side does it use and we'll get into that in detail uh, and then as it sends across the physical layer it then gets received at the other location and then it has to go back up that OSI or TCP IP model and be rebuilt and, and determines what application it, that piece of data gets sent to so every time you send some sort of data it goes through this process it'll go from the application change our colors here it'll go from the application down to the transport layer, through the internet layer slash network layer, through the network access, down through the hardware, and then on the receiving side, it'll work its way back up again, all the way back up to the application. Every single piece of data. So when you, and to use that as an example, so let's say we're sending a file using FTP from one location to another it's going to go from our application down to the transport layer and it's going to say what port do I use and I'm going to I'm simplifying this but it's going to say what what port do I use um, to do so because uh, when it and when it goes from the application layer let's say it's a 50 megabyte file we're trying to send it has to take that 50 megabyte file in the application layer and when it hits the transport layer it's going to segment that into pieces so that's where those chunks come from it's then going to encapsulate that with some port information which defines what application we're using so it's going to say that's going to be port 21 on TCP we're going to use the the TCP protocol on the transport layer port 21 so then it's going to go down to the internet layer slash network layer and it's going to say well what address is is Bob you know across the country uh, what do I who do I send it to so he he might be IP address 8.8.8.8 .8 .8, which obviously is not real you know for for Bob but that's you know that's his address we encapsulate that data again and put that information in the header it then goes down to the network access and it says alright well now I have to get it onto the wire who do I send it to on the other end of this wire to get to this internet network address and it will say okay uh, we're gonna do a, a few steps here and then we're gonna find out okay it needs to go to this MAC address media access control address and we'll talk more about that in the future as well so 
we're going to encapsulate that data again and then it's going to receive that physical address we're going to put that into that header then it's going to eventually go down to the hardware slash physical layer and it's going to get sent out across the wire uh, on a, as a series of bits it's going to traverse our network it's going to get to the other side and then it's going to be received it's going to check okay is this actually for me is this my phys uh, physical address from the other the internet network device yes it is it's going to strip that off it's going to read the uh, IP address on the network address and it's going to say is this my logical address and hopefully it'll say yes it is it's going to strip that off and it's going to read the transport segment information and say okay well this needs to go to the application on port 21 so then it's going to send that to that application and that application will handle that chunk of data as it needs to and there's more steps involved in that but that's the basic idea behind it so it'll go from the application down the layers across the wire and then back up the layers at the other side it does that for every piece of data so that 50 megabyte file might get broken up into thousands of little segments and then it will have to send each of those little segments across the wire and each of that each time that little segment is going to go through and do this process and I've been talking about segments but really there's additional f terms that we use so at this layer when it breaks it up into pieces this is a segment when it gets down to the network layer, for referring to the OSI model, uh, it's going to become a packet. When it gets down to the layer 2, data link layer slash network access layer, that's going to be a frame. And then once it gets down here, it's going to be signaled as bits. So when it's a piece of data that has different header information encapsulated onto it at each level it's going to be called something different so uh, often people refer to them as packets but depending on what technology you're working or configuring you will occasionally use terminology of frame or something like that uh, all of these are considered PDUs protocol data units uh, so the term PDU refers to any sort of chunk of data in any of those stages, segment, packet, or frame. Uh, so I mentioned it encapsulates it as it goes down, and to give a good idea, let's let's draw that out. I'll give you a good idea as to what that what that really means. So we're, we're sending that file over FTP. So let's take that file and we're going to draw it. So here's our 50 megabyte file. This has to get broken up because it's way too big to send across our network. So what we're going to do is slice it up. So when it hits the transport layer, the transport layer is going to say, alright, this is, this is crazy big. We're going to cut this up into pieces. So it's going to slice it up. Each of these slices is called a segment. So we're going to zoom in on one of these segments here down here I'll draw the segment so let's pretend this is one segment this is this piece right here it's going to have some information attached to it at the transport layer that says this is port 21 it's then going to get sent to the internet slash network layer and it's going to say alright well now I need to know what IP address this has and it's going to get additional information attached to it. And it's going to say this is his IP. And then it might also receive a little bit at the sale. And then it's going to go down to the network access layer and say, all right, well, I need to know what physical address. So we're going to say, all right, well, this is the physical address it needs to get sent to, and here's who it's coming from. And each of these layers, IP, the each each of these steps not only do we have a destination when I'm referring to this but we also have source information as well so this is coming from port number 79632 going to port 21 coming from IP 4444 going to IP 88888 uh, from MAC address something to MAC address something so there's there's always source destination information on each of these uh, and then it'll also get a little bit of tail, or tail information there as well this is our data 
and then this is our checksum and CRC information. And then once it gets down to the network access layer, it's, it's got its MAC address information, it gets down to the physical layer, and then this actually gets broken up into actual signals. Electrical ons and offs, 1001100, etc., etc. That's how that works. And then once it gets to the other side, it'll take this, it'll read all these zeros and ones, build this frame, strip off this first chunk, uh, find out what IP it's for, strip off the IP, find out what port it's for, strip off the port, send it to the application layer, the application layer gets the data, and then that process continues over and over again for each piece of that file. Uh, so you think about that as that, and when we get into routing and switching, some of these steps uh, happen, such as the network access or the internet uh, layer, stripping off those encapsulations and then re-encapsulating it happens at each internetwork device, depending on the device, along the way for every single piece of data, every PDU. So you think about it, that's a lot of processing involved. That's something that I found fascinating when I first started networking was that file is doesn't just get sent as one big chunk, it gets broken down into, pa into these little PDUs. Each of those PDUs then gets encapsulated a bunch of times on its way to the wire and then every single router or layer 3 switch along the way is going to take a look at either its layer 2 or layer 3 information by de-encapsulating and encapsulating that, fi that piece again over and over and over and over again, maybe 15 times until it gets to its destination. That's a lot of processing involved. And it might do that for thousands of times. You know, you try to load a large website, that's thousands of files, thousands of uh, PDUs that are going to be sent and received. And it happens, each one, thousands of, thousands of uh, pieces, 15 times <laughs> for each device it hits. Uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, I find that very interesting. Uh, it's a lot involved behind the scenes that you don't, realize and you know when a page loads in two seconds that all happened behind the scenes in two seconds it's a lot of work so those are our layers and that's how that works uh, in the real world we're going to be referring to the OSI model going forward so this is going to be the model that we refer to uh, the most and going forward we're going to have additional videos describing each of these different layers in more detail as to how they operate and I'll probably be repeating myself a little bit on how this works uh, but that is the basics of the OSI and TCP IP model and how it encapsulates and de-encapsulates the data as it goes up and down through that those layers of the model and so from here uh, we're going to go into uh, network addresses and applications in more uh, detail starting from the top of our OSI model and work our way down